You're listening to the International Moving Podcast, your guide to moving to another country, brought to you by SDC International Shipping, LA's finest. An international move is exciting. It's a time to start over, establish a new business maybe, reestablish family ties, or retire where your budget will do more for you. Please enjoy today's episode, and if you have any questions about your international move, give us a call at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962. All right. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the International Moving Podcast, where we break down the ins and outs of relocating across borders. My name is Jim for SDC International Shipping. And today we'll talk a little bit about planning for a more affordable international move in 2025. At 2025, right around the corner, it's amazing how quickly this year has gone by. I mean, here we are uh, just at the beginning of the holiday season and I mean before you know it several weeks will go by and it'll be the new year so I want to talk a little bit about this today moving overseas can definitely feel overwhelming even thinking about it can cause some people to kind of delay their plans for their future and then there's the budget side of things and when you compare just the amount of work with the logistics and the planning and then you think about the budget It becomes overwhelming to some people, but it doesn't have to be an overwhelming topic. Like any other topic, you can break it down into smaller chunks, understand how all these little pieces work, or at least get enough of an overview where you can make a good decision. And with the right planning and a few expert strategies, you can make a smooth transition without breaking the bank, without overspending. Again, my name is Jim, and in this episode, we'll talk about some cost-saving tips some of the biggest factors that affect moving costs, and how SDC International Shipping can help you maximize your budget. So if you're ready to make that dream of yours a reality in 2025, and you're focusing on making it more affordable, I think you'll enjoy this episode. All right, so let's start by talking about the main cost drivers in international move. So we can start here because I think to make the most of your moving budget, you really have to understand what drives the cost of an international move. Some of the main factors include your destination. How far is it? In other words, are you moving to the UK or are you moving to Australia? Other factors like, and you know, there's quite a bit of a distance in between, maybe even somewhere in between will be your location. But destination, of course, the volume of items that you're shipping, your choice of whether to ship by air or sea freight, and even the time of the year. There are certain seasons that are peak seasons, and the cost of moving, of course, is a little bit more expensive during peak time. So moving to a destination, also with high customs fees or complex import regulations, can also increase the cost, especially if you're moving items that require a special type of handling vehicles, antiques, expensive artwork. Also, the volume of your shipment will determine the type of container you will need or not need, and all those things will figure into the shipping costs. Here's a quick tip. Not all international movers are created equal. For example, brokers or middlemen often attract clients with a low initial quote, but they may up add, they may end up adding hidden fees, They may outsource to third parties. The difference is if you're working with a licensed moving company like SDC International Shipping, you'll be able to enjoy a level of transparency that you're just not going to get if you go with a broker. And you'll also have more control and a dedicated team that'll be working with you from the very start of the process until the finish. Whereas with a broker, You're going to have to deal with things like calls that aren't returned right away, a lack of information, and you can be in the dark at several times, especially if something goes wrong and they're trying to figure it out on their end. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about transparency. Those are things that you just don't get from a broker. Now, if we look at some of the cost-saving strategies that you can implement for your move, let's talk about them. These are very practical, and they can help save money on your move. The first one is groupage and consolidation. 
Groupage or consolidation is an excellent way to reduce costs. And this method combines smaller shipments from multiple clients in one container. So in, instead of having to pay for a whole container for yourself that you may not need because you don't have enough to fill that container, then you can share the cost of that container with other clients. And this sharing costs with others that are moving to the same destination, absolutely it's going to save money for you. At SDC, all of the logistics for this are handled for you to ensure that each shipment is carefully packed, separated, and managed for customs. And so that's one of the most cost-effective options that are available out there today. Groupage is perfect if you're moving smaller, a smaller volume of items, or if you're not in a rush. And it's a way to cut costs without sacrificing the actual quality of the move. See, it's one thing to cut costs, but it's another thing to suffer a loss of quality. And groupage and consolidation, just two technical terms that mean you're going to share the container space with other people. It's gonna, you're gonna go in a group instead of just by yourself. That's what consolidation also means. So next we have sea freight over air freight. While air freight is the fastest option, it's also the most expensive. Sea freight is much more budget friendly, especially for a full household move. It may take a few extra weeks, but it's worth it if you're looking to save. Maybe there's a, cer a few certain items that you take with you that you'll need immediately, and you can send those by air freight, and then you can send everything else by sea freight. Because if timing isn't a big factor, and you can also you know, book your move during an off-peak season, off-peak season, what do we mean by that? We're talking about like late winter or early spring, and you combine that with sea freight. All those things combined together can lead to lower rates because there's a decreased demand at that time. All right, next we have packing strategies. Another area to consider for savings is packing. So some clients choose to pack their own items to cut down on costs, which can be helpful if you have the time and the right packing materials and at least know a little bit about what you're doing. However, we recommend letting pros handle fragile or high value items because that's what you'll need to do in order to have those items insured. You'll have to have them professionally packed. That makes sense because the insurance company doesn't want to pay out because you didn't pack something properly or didn't know what you're doing. Poorly packed items, of course, can lead to damage or costly replacements, but there are some items that if you think about it, they're sturdy or the chances of them breaking are slim to none, and it just makes sense that you could do it yourself. The whole trick with packing is to make sure the items inside the container aren't shifting during the move. And that's where breakage happens. When something has movement or it shifts, that's where, the, that's where all of the problems happen. I learned that from firsthand experience. During my own big move, I moved 1,000 miles, even though it wasn't international, or maybe it was like 1,200 miles, somewhere in there, from the northeast down to the state of Florida years ago. We did all of our packing, and there was, you know, there, there were a few minor issues. Some glassware was broken. A few dishes were broken in transit. And you think about it: why is movement the key? Because if if you think about how many times an item is handled, every time an item is handled, there's the possibility of something being dropped or put down heavily, or that's where the problems happen. And so the minimal amount of touch to each item ensures all th other things being equal, a, a safer moving process. And so for me, with my own, for, for example, I had a few crystal glasses that broke, and I don't mean they were smashed to pieces, I mean they were just cracked. And what happened is I just didn't put enough packing materials in the box around these items to eliminate shift during moves. And shifts can be caused from everything. If you're moving items across land, then you know just the truck putting on the brakes can put enough shift to break something that's fragile. If there's movement inside the box, you know the item hits the side of the box or something like that. So, but having a professional packer pack the high, using the high quality materials, 
packing like fragile or high value items that is just gives you a whole lot of peace of mind and i would definitely do that again if i were moving not across town but a long distance move okay so if you're packing some of your own items packing materials like sturdy boxes bubble wrap all those things can help you and you don't have to buy like the the top of the top but you can reuse packing materials also if you've had them in the past and you've saved them you just have to make sure the materials are in good conditions because customs regulations often require clean and new packaging, especially for international shipments. So if you look around your house and you imagine how sturdy each object is, you can get an idea of what you'd feel comfortable packing or not feel comfortable packing. Next, let's talk about budget-friendly moving services that SDC International Shipping offers. So... Let's talk about some specific services, actually, that can make your move more cost-effective and hassle-free. The first is a customized quote. One of the things that sets SDC apart is the transparent and tailored quotes. When you work with SDC, you'll receive a clear estimate based on your exact needs. There aren't any hidden fees. There aren't any unexpected surprises. And this personalized approach means that we can help you find solutions so that you can move within your budget. And that's a, that's a big um, advantage there. Each client has unique needs. So building a custom quote based on factors like the destination, the volume, the service preferences, this will help you get an option that will fit your budget. Also, there are things like storage solutions. Another way to save is by using one of SDC's storage solutions. So if you're planning a phased move, then some of your items can be stored in the U.S. until you're ready for them. And this allows you to split up the shipment and reducing the need for multiple moves and give you some flexibility if you're maybe still securing housing in your destination country, which is something that I was actually surprised when I learned about this process for the first time. Many people actually make the move before securing housing and then they have to look into renting something. And so they, they appreciate the ability to store things temporarily until they secure their housing. So most people are on a timetable, especially if you're moving for professional reasons. And so, you know, you may have help from the company that you work for, but just rest assured that SDC is also here to help you on our side to make sure everything is done properly. Now, Insurance options, protecting your belongings without breaking the bank. That's another thing that people like to uh, understand and get more information about. Insurance is a must for any international move, but that doesn't mean that you have to break the bank on the most expensive type of insurance possible. There's two primary options that people look at. One is total loss insurance, which covers the entire shipment if it's completely lost. So that doesn't cover one item in the shipment. It covers everything. It's an all or nothing type of policy. Then there's all risk insurance, which can provide comprehensive coverage for individual items. So if you're moving a high value or sentimental item, then we recommend all risk insurance. It's a bit more of an investment, but for those specific things, it'll offer peace of mind and financial protection in case of any unforeseen issues. And if you're looking to save money, consider only insuring the high value items and then you can opt for total loss coverage on the rest. So maybe there's, you know, you have an old grandfather clock. It's an antique or a curio cabinet, an antique, and you want to have individual coverage for that. And then maybe you look at everything else and you think, you know, I don't want to over insure. I'll just do total loss for the rest. Or you have a china collection plates or glassware dishes all of that maybe you want to ensure that you you understand what i'm talking about and that's the nice thing you don't have to get the most expensive and you have to get the cheapest you're not locked into either one you can mix and match depending on your individual needs and that's another nice thing of working with a company like sdc because we want to make sure that at the end of your international moving experience, as far as the move itself goes, that you are happy with the service that's been provided for you. So happy that you'll leave us a good review and that you'll tell your friends and family that if you're ever in, if you're ever going to make a big move, make sure you contact SDC International Shipping first. 
So, and that's how we grow our business by serving one person at a time at each and every single move is in, is very important to us that the person or the family is happy with their experience. Okay, so let's talk about some final tips. To wrap this topic up, I would say that at the very beginning, you might as well declutter. Moving is a perfect time to go through your belongings and decide what you truly need and what you don't need. If you've moved multiple times, you've probably already been through this experience. Even local moves where you leave things behind and then the next thing you know, all the clutter builds back up again. It's like myself, every so often I go through the stack of papers that I have and then the stack seems to grow. Two or three months later, I go through the stack, I throw things out and I tell myself that I'm going to have a different type of system to keep everything orderly for the next time. And then the next time comes and I'm back to the same place that I've been in before. I've wrestled with this kind of thing for years. And I'm, although I've never found a perfect solution, I'm improving a little bit over time anyway. One of the things that really was a time-consuming, back-breaking part of the moves that I made was that I enjoyed reading, whether it was a paperback book mostly or hardcover books. How many of you know that when you pack books in a box, they are heavy? And so I had all of these boxes of books, and I noticed that, well, you know, the books have become a major part of my move. Which books will I probably never read again? And I had to be brutally honest with myself in order to pare down all of these extra books that I had. And then, of course, you have other options. Maybe you can buy the Kindle version and save space. It all depends if you're really intent on cutting back and saving. Maybe you're not going to have room where you're going, the same amount of room for certain items that you did before. I know that some people, they turn a room into an office, and that office in their house becomes filled up with stuff. I know people that actually built art studios and sound studios in their home. Then when it was time to move, they had to figure out how to recreate a smaller version of that at their destination. So so don't feel bad. I mean, we all get cluttered up with junk that we think that we are going to need. But at the end of the day, it's really not that important. You're not alone. So, okay. Next, consider alternative transport options for your vehicle. If you're bringing a vehicle, shipping it inside of a container with your household goods is an ep economical, very safe way to transport it. And so there are other ways or other methods like roll on, roll off. And people that have been in this industry for a while, almost no one that I personally know recommends that option because just all kinds of things can, can happen with just having your car rolled onto the vessel as is. Security, safety, there's just all kinds of things. And another thing, I have to be honest with this, the more I've been in this around this topic, the more I've come to the conclusion that many times it's just not worth importing a vehicle into another country. Oftentimes it's worth selling what you have here and then buying over there because depending on the laws and the, and the taxes and the fees, some countries like the Philippines is a good example, and that's just one of many they make it almost cost prohibitive to bring a vehicle into the country. It's almost like you're buying it again. And so it's to me, it would just be easier more often than not. Now, there are exceptions. Maybe you have an antique vehicle and you're going to live in this other country. You're not in, intending on coming back to the U.S. or to another country. I understand that. But for the average person, and what's funny is we get so many people asking on our YouTube channel about things like motorcycles. It seems like people have more of a personal attachment to their motorcycles. I got to be honest with you, it's no different with motorcycles. <clears throat> they make it cost prohibitive to bring a motorcycle over. One person even said to me, well, what if I basically disassembled it and put the pieces in different boxes? And I, I said to him, I said, if you thought of it, the people at Customs have all, not have already thought of it, but other people have tried to get through that way. Believe me, you don't want to try and do something that's illegal. They have these laws in place for a reason. And most of the time, the reason is just very simple. They want to make it expensive for you to bring a vehicle, motorcycle, car, truck, whatever, into another country so that you will buy a vehicle in their country 
and invest in their economy. And I 100% understand that. Over the last year or so, one of the debates has been about importing cars and fees and tariffs and all of that into the country. Every country wants to, all things being equal, invest in their own economy, invest in their own people. And that's why we like to buy things that are manufactured locally and sold locally because it creates jobs and helps the economy. And it's no difference with the with the auto economy in other countries. They want you to purchase a vehicle there and they're not going to make it simple in a lot of cases for you to import a car. Now, I don't want to make it so that you're afraid to do it or give up on it or or have that be something that you know you lose sleep over. I'm just giving you the full picture and both sides of it. So if you're going to move a vehicle over and you have your I's dotted and your T's crossed and you're going to pay whatever the fees are, I would suggest doing it inside a, a container along with your household goods. And... Also, plan ahead. Plan ahead. This is very important. The more time you give yourself, and isn't it this way with just about everything, but the more time you give yourself, the more flexibility you have in choosing budget-friendly options. Last-minute bookings can lead to limited choices, higher prices, and this is especially so if you're going to move during a peak moving season. So, all right, there you have it. So, moving is not cheap, but it doesn't have to break the bank. And it's understandable. Think about what is involved in packing and shipping and air freight and sea freight and all of the hands that touch your items as they go from point A to point B and all of the planning, the fuel, all of it that goes in together that keeps people working, that keeps companies in business. Of course, it's not going to be a cheap service, but it doesn't have to be a service again that breaks the bank And SDC International Shipping has built a company and a brand around these concepts. We understand we are a household shipping, household mover, international mover. And the difference is, is because anybody can ship anything from point A to point B today. There are dozens, hundreds of companies out there that can do it. Anybody can ship packages from here to there, wherever that happens to be. But when it comes to a household move, when it comes to making sure the boxes are ticked, understanding customs, logistics, and getting everything done in such a way that we remove the stress from you, we remove the anxiety from you so that you can focus on the things that are important, all of the other things, your life in a new country, your job in a new country, setting up your bank accounts in a new country, getting your phones or cell phones or all of that. You can focus on the rest of that. We'll handle all of the international moving logistics and hurdles. We'll clear those for you. So if you have more questions, you by all means stop by the website www.sdcinternationalshipping.com. That's sdcinternationalshipping.com. We have a live chat there available. You can fill out the form, get a free estimate. It's very simple, very easy to do. And I think that'll do it for today's episode. So thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend, subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for listening. Whether you're relocating within the country or moving to the other side of the world, We're here to help from start to finish. Connect with us today at 888-779-3962. That's 888-779-3962.